Pleasant morning to everyone. God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. Thank God for this privilege to be able to speak to us this morning. And what a blessing it is to be in this place of worship. The hymn writer says, What a thrill I get when I get together with God's wonderful people. Amen. It's a blessing when we can get together with people of like mind. Amen. Amen. Who will encourage and lift up and build up and point us forward and upward. That's such a tremendous blessing. I hate to be around negative people who will get you down and get you discouraged and they're always complaining. It makes you sick. But thank God for the church. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. I listened to some of the concerns during the prayer time and I'm going to address a few of them in my message. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace and your mercies. As we open your words, open our minds, and give us understanding, may we learn something that will draw us closer to you. And we will be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Speak to me, through me, and for me. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading tells us, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the, of the scriptures might have hope. So in other words, Paul's first letter to the church, he said to us whatever was written beforehand was written for our learning, patience, comfort, and hope. In other words, before you and I came into existence, there are some things in the scriptures that was written especially for us. Amen? Yes. So God knows the future, and only God can do that. Amen? Amen. So the scriptures is not just an ordinary book. I remember the story is told of an individual who was in the bookstore one day and he was looking frantically in the eyes for a particular book and he was not finding the book so the attendant noticed that he was not finding what he was looking for so she went and asked him, what are you looking for? He said to her, I'm looking for the book entitled Jesus Now and Then. <laughs> and she said to him, no reason you can't find it. That's not the title of the book. The, the title of the book is Jesus Then and Now. Amen? So it's not Jesus Now and Then, but Jesus Then and Now, because he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so we got to get it right. Now I'm going to give us, um, the title of the message is, A Place of Refuge. And all of us at some point in time need a place of refuge, amen? Amen. You know that there's a place that you can run to, a place that you will be safe, that you will find hope, and uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a blessing. So the scripture is not so much about dates and times and events of chronology, but it is about salvation history. Mm -hmm. Amen? Whatever was written at one time was written for you and I. Amen? That we might learn through patience and comfort of the scriptures. Amen? So it is relevant. And, and what really gets to me is that the scriptures is relevant for every time period, for every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Amen? What was true yesterday is true today and will be true tomorrow. True does not change over time. It's relevant and it's, it's up to date. More up to date than the daily newspaper or the, or the daily news. Amen? Yes. Thank God for His Word. 
God loves us with an everlasting love. Amen? Amen. And He loves every single one of us. Never forget that. A place of refuge. So the scripture is about salvation history. It's really His story. After the book of Genesis, it's really centered around one family, and that is the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and so on. And I want to remind us that God chose them. God said, not because you are mighty, not because you are strong, but because you are few, because you are weak and feeble. That's why God chose them, to make them an example. Amen? Amen. And the reason why God chose us is not because of our strength. You are here not because you're good looking. You are here because of God's grace and mercy, amen? amen? Because of our weakness. He said to his chosen people, you are a stiff-necked, hard-headed people, amen? amen. <clears throat> now the River Jordan ran basically the, right down the middle of Palestine. And Moses was instructed to have some cities for some events that would be coming up. They were called cities of refuge. There were three on the west and three on the east. In other words, you would not have to run very far in case you had to find refuge in these cities. Now he was instructed to build or to have these cities because of problems that would arise. And you find the stories in Numbers 35, Deuteronomy 19, and Joshua chapter 20. There were sins that would be committed that were not intentional. The Bible calls them unawares. You did not intend to commit a sin, but it happened, you know, it, it, it occurred. Now let's suppose that Ray and I were out there cutting down trees. Remember one day that one of Elisha's um, um, servant um, was out in the field and his, his axe fell out on the river, his axe head. So the, the, the story tells us that while you're out there, accidents can happen. So let's say we're out there cutting down trees. And uh, his axe head fell from the handle and hit me in my head. Now, now that's a dangerous thing, amen? Yeah. Now he begins to see the blood oozing out, and he comes and he checks my pulse, and he sees that there is no pulse because I've lost blood, I'm weak, and I'm, I just, I just died to put it plain. Now, he can run home to his family and try to explain to Susan what happened. Or he can go to my family and say it was an accident. But back then in those days, uh, an accidental death was not treated like an accidental death. You with me? I want you to follow me this morning. <clears throat> death was death. They did not care if it was intentional or if it was unintentional, they did not care if it was an accident because the person has died. And that individual might have been the main provider for the family. So that it's a terrible thing. God was showing the importance of death because only God created life and only God can take life. Amen? Amen. That's why the scripture says, Thou shalt not kill. God has tried to enforce or make a statement how serious is, um, is our actions because they have consequences. Because you, let's say Ray comes to my family and they will say, well, why was your axe head more secure? Why was it more tight? It is your carelessness. And now I am there. Now, you didn't have time to go to Susan or Kyla and say, what happened? Because you're in an emergency crisis now, you're in an emergency situation. You have to, wherever you find yourself, 
you have to begin to run to the city of refuge. Now, it was about a half a day's journey, which is equivalent to 15 miles. How many of us have run 15 miles lately? <laughs> now, I want to remind us that all of us here this morning are runners. And we are all running for refuge. And if, you, if, if you're not running, then something is wrong. <laughs> because we need to find a place of refuge. <clears throat> now, even though sins were committed intentionally, and you are still unaware of the situation because you have been blinded by the devil, so that what you think was not um, intentional, or unintentional is intentional. You understand what I'm saying? Because the devil has blinded some of us. For example, remember when we had a meeting here at Pastor Lowe, and there were many individuals who came to the meetings, and there were many evenings, after the meeting was over, we stayed back, some of us, and we had a discussion with some of the individuals who had questions about the Sabbath, about what they were doing, fools, and you name it, and so on. I remember running my own meetings and having discussions after the meeting with groups of individuals because they had questions, you know. And uh, my heart goes out to such individuals because the Bible says in 2 Peter, let's look at it, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. What book did I say? 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2. Verses 20 and 21. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, they turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. In other words, what, what Peter is saying is better you have not come to the meeting. Because after you have come to the meeting and truth, which is light, is given to you and you refuse to obey the truth, then it's like you are dog returning to your own vomit. It's better you have not known the truth than to have known the truth and despise the truth. Now, God does not hold anyone accountable for being in darkness. God did not hold Pharaoh responsible for worshipping idols or being in darkness. What God held him responsible for because truth came in the, in the, in the preaching of Moses the prophet. And God was making a statement. And he refused the light. And because he refused the light, that's why he was condemned. Not for being in darkness, but because light is come and men love darkness rather than light. So my heart goes out to individuals who have come to this church or these meetings and they have listened to the truth of God about the Sabbath. They have been breaking it all their life and they were unaware. It was sin anyway, but it was unaware. So God in the time of ignorance, he wins. Mm. Amen. Mm. But now that you know, I cannot imagine a person living knowing what God says and still refuse to do what God says is a whole different ball game. Amen? Amen. Now if, I, if after I had received this message in my teenage years, I could not but decide for Christ. Amen? I could not live with myself knowing that this is what God requires. This is what He says. This is the truth. And I heard a small voice behind me saying, this is the way, walk in it. Amen? How can you go against a conscience? Like Martin Luther said, I cannot go against conscience, so help me God. Amen? Amen. He concluded that he's going to be true to his maker. Friend of mine, what I'm trying to say this morning, if after you have committed this crime, you have committed murder, you now begin to make your way to the city of refuge. <clears throat> now, family didn't matter, your employment didn't matter, tiredness 
dediler Kamil your main goal is to get within the walls of the city amen amen now I can testify this morning that how you can run when you are scared now I live back in the islands and, and, and our, our, the little village that we lived in was in a was there was an open lot or about a half a mile stretch, thick um, woods and, and, and nobody lived in that stretch and it was dark and it was scary. There was one woman living there. She lived in a, in a little trap in a galvanized shack. Her name was Edna. And seeing her in the daytime alone would scare you. <laughs> Must have seen her in the night. And sometimes we would stay out late, and we were told that she was a bona fide witch. You know, and, and back then they would call her a sukunya, which is a, an evil person. We didn't know she must have been a very nice individual, very kind, very loving. We didn't know that as kids. But the very mention of her name, or the very mention of passing there um, after that, would give you a scare. So what we would do, what I would do, I would hang out in the street and wait for a car or a bicycle that has some light in it, you know. And if I had flip-flops, I'd take my flip-flops, put it in my hands, and, they, and back then our souls were, were hard because we live in the country, we live off the land, and we did everything bare feet, so it didn't matter if there were pebbles in the streets, it was nothing, it didn't matter because you were now scared, amen? And you are running because you are scared. And I can testify, back then, this brother could run, amen? <laughs> I remember, you know, every day we'd be playing soccer, and, uh, and, uh, and I believe I was fast. And I was indeed fast, you know? And that's how I began running in marathon and so on. And I had the stamina. So, when you are scared, friend of mine, because there, there, there's what called the code of the avenger. You see that the victim relatives could get the eldest male and in search of you, Mr. Ray, and kill you. And by him killing you would not be considered murder. But you killing me accidentally, unintentionally, was considered murder because I am dead. Because the family back then did not care if, if it was an accident because he is dead. Amen? Mm -hmm. He's not coming back. So he can kill you and then you will not be considered murder. So your, your main safety, your only safety is to go to this place of refuge. So tiredness didn't matter, your job didn't matter, your family doesn't matter. You have no time to explain anything. You begin to run. Amen. So you can put on your shoes or get on your horse or the donkey. Or with all the energy you can muster from these two legs, you begin to run to the city of refuge. Amen. That was your only safety. Now when you get to the city of refuge, you are not free to do as you please. The city of refuge is not a place where you are free to do as you please and you are not free to leave. You are confined. You, you are poverty stricken. You are sustained by the Levites. You are sustained by the high priest. The high priest kept you alive. Every, every morsel of food you eat comes from the high priest. Every clothes on your back is because of the high priest. The, the shadow of your head is because of the mercy of the high priest. The only thing that got you out of the city was death. Death got you in and death gets you out. The only thing that gets you out is the death of the high priest. So you have to stay within the, the confines of those walls. You are not free to leave. You are not free to do as you please. <coughs> but you, you, are, you are within the boundaries of the city of refuge. Amen? Mm -hmm. Until the death of the high priest, then you are free to leave, go back to your family, 
but you stay there until that time. Amen? Amen. No, I, I won't go into every nitty gritty detail, but you can read these passages. Amen? Gives you a good idea. <clears throat> now, I want to read a statement from Patriarchs and Prophets. Uh, what the servant of the Lord said about the, the cities of refuge. Page 516 and 517. The cities of refuge appointed for God's ancient people were a symbol of the refuge provided in Christ. The same merciful Savior who appointed those temporal cities of refuge has by the shedding of his own blood provided for the transgressors of God's law a sure retreat into which they may flee for safety from the second death. No power can take, can take out of his hands the souls that go to him for pardon. And further mind, that's good news. Amen. When you are scared, security, uh, temporal security, family, friends, doesn't matter. The things that we crave, that we spend all our time and our energies going after, when we are at the point of crisis, there's only one thing that is of paramount importance, and that is safety. Amen. Now, when I go to the prison, the number one um, yeah. goal for, for the, the facility is security. That's the primary importance, security. There are many times I was in lockdown because after the guards did a count, they came up short. So if they, if they come up short, you cannot leave the prison. You have to stay when you get a clearance to leave, amen? And sometimes you are taken with the inmates to another facility and you are confined until they get the count clear. Because their number one goal is security. <clears throat> Your number one place of safety is the, is the city of refuge. You, are, you cannot leave the city of refuge now. <clears throat> Remember, the Avenger, the code of the Avenger is on the outside. So, he's waiting for you, amen? amen? Now, there is an investigation that has to take place by the, by the leaders, by the elders, by, you have to be judged. Now, you cannot take the word of one individual, of one witness. <clears throat> because let's suppose that realize out there, his axe head fell out hit me in my head unintentionally, but I'm there. And there is a witness, but you cannot take the word of one witness because suppose that one witness hates Mr. Ray, that all odds will be against him. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. So you cannot take the word of one witness because it must be more than one witness. You know, that's why God says, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. There was a reason for these principles, amen? <clears throat> Another time I'll go get into that. But whatever God says, it's not just a play with words. There's a reason for these stories. There are deep spiritual meaning with these stories, amen? amen. Because they, they meet their fulfillment in Christ, amen? Yes. <clears throat> For example, Kadesh, Goshen, Shechem, the whole cities of refuge. Now, I don't understand when people come to the, the church, which is a place of refuge, and they leave. In a city of refuge, you are not free to leave. You cannot leave until the death of the high priest. You are confined, you are sustained. You are kept alive by the mercy of the high priest. You are poverty stricken, amen? Because the event is on the outside. Where are you going when you leave this place, amen? <clears throat> now, friend of mine, you are not free to do as you please as well. 
you're under the, the guidance and the regulations stipulated by the city rulers, amen? You're under their protection, you're under their leadership, you're under their jurisdiction, amen? So we are not free to leave the place of refuge. You are not free to do as you please. The only time you are free to leave is if the high priest dies. <clears throat> Paul says that whatever was written for was written for our learning, for our admonition, for peace, for hope. There is comfort in the scriptures, friend of mine, amen. amen. There is security in the word of God. It's about Christ and what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will continue to do for every single one of us. All of us are running from something. I've met individuals who are already been scared. You can see it in their faces. You can look into their eyes, especially those who have committed crime first time and they find themselves in prison. Now I tell you that if you have never been scared before, you have not been through anything. I know what it's like to be scared, amen? And I mean, you're running for your life. Now back in the islands, we have dogs. And the dogs are bad. And the, the, the owners know that they are bad dogs. And the, the very smell of a human being, the dogs are the peak. You know, they're they are fully away. And they don't, they don't have to see you. There's a smell of, and they, they, they have a strong sense of smell. You can be a mile away, and those dogs know that you're coming. Now, now you, you, now I can testify today that two legs are faster than four. Amen. <laughs> Because you know the other reason why the fox did not catch the rabbit? Because the fox was running for a meal. The rabbit was running for his life. Amen? Amen. Now when you're running for your life, two can outrun four. Amen. <laughs> Believe you me. When, when you're in a scary situation from the back, and you know that your only safety is in Christ, you need to go to Jesus, amen. And then run buffet. Amen. <laughs> Friend of mine, there is peace. There is security. Our refuge is in Christ. You remember one day when, when, uh, when Christ was coming to John to be baptized of him? Yes. Now, John had never seen Jesus before. Amen. And the moment John saw Christ, he said, Behold, in other words, he was saying, Look, look, everybody, behold the Lamb of God, which taken away the sin of the world. And when Christ came to John to be baptized, John said, Why are you coming to me? I need to be baptized of you. Because Christ had not committed any sin, amen. He was the only sinless individual who ever walked upon the face of this earth. And Christ said to John, that may be true, but suffer it to be so. In other words, force yourself to baptize me. Because what Christ was saying to John one day, in the not too distant future, I'll be on a cross. And there'll be a thief on the cross along with me. Amen. And I will be running out of time, and so will he be running out of time. Amen. Our time is going to expire. The team doesn't have time to come down to confess to everyone he had faulted. He didn't have time to come down or return tithes or keep the Sabbath or have a healthy lifestyle. He's going to die. So my baptism is going to cover him. Amen. So suffer to be sold now. Force yourself. So when God looked down, uh, before the thief acknowledged faith in Christ, God saw his son. But after the thief acknowledged faith in Christ, when God looked down, he saw two sons. And they both look alike, amen? 
Friend of mine, when we come to Jesus, John 6.35, Christ says, All that the Father has given me will come to me. And he that cometh to me, I will by no means cast out. Amen. So when we come to Jesus, friend of mine, we find security, we find refuge.